It just fills my heart. You see these girls on Sunday morning. David, I appreciate you bringing them. If you would, turn with you in your Bibles with me this morning to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, we'll be starting in verse 19. Let's all stand for breathing God's word this morning. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. But ye do, but ye, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and defiled before God, or undefiled before God, and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Fathers, we come to you this morning, Father. We're so thankful, Lord, that we still have the freedom, Lord, to gather in church, Lord, and proclaim the word of God. Father, I'm thankful for this little church. I'm thankful, Lord, for the ones that come. This morning, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, each person could receive this message, Lord, that you've given me this morning. Lord, apply it to their heart. Father, we'll give you the honor and the praise and the glory. It's in Jesus' sweet name. We only ask. Amen. Amen. So many times we see people that comes to church and they sit on the pew and they go home. And that's it for a lot of people. They come to church, they sit on the pew, and they go home. They don't try to apply a message to their heart. They don't try to understand what God has given the pastor for that morning. We're living in a day and time that the Word of God don't mean anything to so many people. Most people nowadays are trying to do away with God's holy word. But I'm thankful this morning that we still have the freedom 
to come to church, to sing God's praises, and to worship Him. People don't realize it, but our freedom for the past 50 years or so is slowly being taken away from us. And when we come to church, we not only need to hear the Word of God, but in our daily walk, we need to apply God's Word Amen. to our life, Amen. And to our walk, that people can see That's right. that Jesus lives within us. You know, there's plenty of preachers out there, but how many of them really, really preach at God's Word? You got preachers that wants to sugar it down because he don't want to offend nobody. And the reason he don't want to offend nobody is because he wants that offering to build up. So he can make his weekly salary. He's afraid if he offends, then it's going to hurt his pocketbook. You know, I've said from day one, it don't matter how much money is in that offering plate. It don't matter if it's $20 a week, $200 a week, or $2,000 a week. I'm not going to water down or sugarcoat the Word of God just to get people in there. I would love to see this church full. I would love to see this church full of doers. People that wants to get out and do something for God. But I'm not going to water it down just to get them here. And I'm not going to sugarcoat what's in this Word of God is what I believe from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm not going to try to change God's Word. I seen a thing on Facebook the other day. It said, God's Word does not need to be rewritten. It only needs to be reread. How much truth is in that? How many of us pick up a Bible during the week and sit down and read God's Holy Word? You know, we're commanded from God to study God's holy word. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto the world. Being a Christian is not a Sunday morning thing. Being a Christian 24 7. That's right. We should have God on our in our heart and on our mind 24 7. And I'll be the first to admit that I got a long way to go before I'm there. There's 24 hours in a day. And I'm not a good, I'm not good at math. Anybody good at math, hold your hand. How many we, how many minutes, how many minutes are in a day? 24 times 6. Secretary working on it here. 1,440. 
minutes in a day. Now, how many minutes does it take to say, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. Lord, thank you for my family. Or Lord, just thank you for this beautiful day. How many minutes does it take to say that? How many times do we even think of that a day? It'd be safe to say that the majority of people don't even think of stuff like that during the day's time. That ought to be the first thing on our mind when we wake up. Oh, morning. God, thank you for another day. Amen. Lord, thank you for sparing my life that I have this day. Amen. Thank you for this wonderful day I have. Lord, thank you for the trials that came my way today. May I use those trials to learn from it. It don't take no time. We must give the Lord thanks. So many times. I know I've been there. We get up. Lord, I just hope I can make it through this day. I hope everything goes all right today, because yesterday, man, it was it really is it was just a bad day. What's wrong with us? God blesses us every second of it, every hour. But yeah, we get up complaining. Lord, I hope this day is better than yesterday was. I just don't know if I can take another yesterday or not. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust in you, Lord, that it's gonna be a better day than yesterday. <laughs> right, amen. That's better than saying, Lord, I hope this day's better than yesterday was. We need to find a way to thank God for everything that He does for us. You know, I'm able to walk over here and get a sip of water when my throat gets dry. I've seen a time that I couldn't do that. For five years, if I wanted to get a sip of water out of that cup, I'd have to roll myself over to it. Because I couldn't get out of the water. But I thank God that He loved me and He had mercy and grace. That one morning when I woke up, I was able to bypass that wheelchair. And I've not been in it since. And from that day, I wanted to be a doer instead of a, just a hearer. And I think all Christians should be that way. We need to do instead of just sitting and listening, being a bitch morning. We need to be up doing something for God. 
It ain't nothing to say the Lord, thank you for saving my soul. Lord, thank you for my family. Lord, thank you that I've got clothes on my back. I've got food in the refrigerator. Amen. I've got transportation if I need to go to town. I've got a way to get there. Lord, thank you that I've got a way to get to the doctor when I need to go. People these days, I don't know, they just seem to take everything in, in, in granted. Well, I've got this and I've got this. Well, I had to work for it. <coughs> True, we had to work for it. But who gave us the energy? The know how to get our job done so that we could draw a paycheck and our needs. It's all because of God's great mercy. Without God's mercy, we wouldn't be able to do it. God has put so much on my mind this week. Seeing how he's treated by people who claim they love him. But yet they can't take two seconds to say, Lord, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, that I can get up and walk to the living room, walk to the kitchen, and have something to eat when I get up. Lord, thank you for my family. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. You know, if I started right now, even if I could remember everything I need to thank God for, and if I started thanking Him the way I need to, I wouldn't be done this time next year. Mm -hmm. Because everything that happens in my life God had a hand in it. Two weeks ago this morning, I woke up. I didn't know my name. I couldn't tell nobody what day I was born on. I didn't know. Didn't know where I was. I was just there. But by the next morning, everything come back to me when I woke up. I knew who I was. I knew, I knew when my birthday was. What was the first thing I'd done when I woke up that Monday morning. I thank God that I had my mind back. You know, having diabetes is it's a rough thing.
But God showed me through that that I need to thank him for everything. I thank God I've got diabetes. You may say, man, you're crazy. I'll be like, yeah, why would you thank God that you got diabetes? Because I know when I wake up and my sugar's off the scale and I can't remember who I am, I know he can bring me through. You know, a lot of times God lets us go through things so we can see <coughs> more of how he's going to bless us. More of his power that he can bless us through whatever comes our way. You know, no matter who we're living, in the past two months, I've seen more copperheads there than I've seen in my whole life. And I tell you what, I am one that when I see a snake, I want to head somewhere else. I don't like them. I don't even like a dead snake. You can ask my daughter, I don't even like a rubber snake. But I thank God that he's given me the, I don't know the word I'm looking for, He's given me the strength to live with my biggest fear, and that is snakes. Because, buddy, we have got our share of them. As a matter of fact, come the end of this month, we're going to be moving again. But we're going home this time. God has shown me that if I trust in him that our broken septic tank is going to be okay when we move back home. Now we've got we got some work to do before we get moved in. But just this week Guy has told me that he's going to supply the wood we need to repair our kitchen. And he's going to come and help me repair that kitchen for me. Didn't have to ask nobody. That's one thing I hate doing is begging for something. Even though I might need it, I don't want to have to ask nobody to help me with anything because I'm just that way. I was raised that way. But there again, God has showed me that he's going to take care of our needs. And it, it just, it blows my heart. To see what God can do. <clears throat> God knows that I am definitely scared of snakes. And God knows that all three of us, we don't even want to live there anymore because of the snakes. And they say baby copperheads have more venom. And any snake has, and they don't know how to control it, so when they bite all that venom, they're going to go in. Now, what does that tell you? 
If you get bit by a baby copperhead, nine times out of ten, you ain't going to make it. If all that venom comes out at one time, but then that snake, and they say that them babies has more venom in them than a adult copperhead or full-grown copperhead, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm just not that keen on knowing about a copperhead. <laughs> But God takes care. And God will take care of us all. If we'll get our heart into place the Lord can. There ain't nothing no worse than a crying preacher. I used to say there ain't nothing no worse than a crying man. But when God overflows, it just seems like every time you turn around, he's doing something else to bless you. Yep. What can you do? I am overjoyed this morning with love. Oh, God keeps showing me what he can do and how he can do it and just fill my heart with love and it's beyond me how anybody could get up on the morning and not even have one thought of what God is doing in their life going about their day Complain all day about what's going wrong instead of looking up and thanking God for what's going on. I could have got it up last month or Monday before last year and said, What's going to happen? What's going what's to happen next? I, you know, I have that attitude. I got it, thank God. He brought me through what could have been a, a bad, bad time for all three of us if I hadn't have come back, if my sugar hadn't have dropped to where I could be in my right mind. You know, I've always heard that diabetes was dangerous. And I've always had the attitude, well, I'm going to eat what I'm going to eat, or what I want to eat. But through that little episode last Sunday, I'm beginning to see things a little different. I'm trying to look at it as God would look at it. I mean, the reason I've got diabetes in the first place is because I never took care of myself. As far as eating, I'm always eating what I want, when I want it, and how much I want it. Didn't matter if it, I bent over double after I ate it, because I couldn't hold it. But if I wanted it, I was going to eat it. That was, that was just the way I, I lived. But God... Sometimes we may think it's strange, but God will show us things. And it, he, he may show it to us in a way that we don't want to see it. But God will bless us and keep blessing us as long as we let him. We may have to do some changes in order for him to bless us. But if we'll seek God's will in all that we do, I guarantee you life will be a lot simpler if we'll do that.
But it's 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 thrilling my heart that we're able to move to the place we moved out of because we had so much problems with it. It's just like God's picked the whole situation up, turned it right around, and set it back down in the same place it always stood. And only God could do that. When I checked on getting a new sewer system, the man said because the way that the house is built and the way the porches are built with your concrete and dirt on the <laughs> ground and concrete on top, it would cost us about $13,000 to redo ourselves. And when you're on disability, $13,000 is hard to come by, especially just like that. But the septic system has seemed to correct it itself. Well, let me rephrase that. God has seemed to have corrected the septic system. Well, let me correct that again. It ain't seemed. I'm believing God has fixed our septic system. Went through the house the other morning after it rained and there wasn't no leaks in it. So he's fixed the leaking problem. I have to give him the credit. Because there's no other lot there's no other logical reason why everything's set right to the opposite it was when we left. And then a guy walks up and Asked you how many pieces of plywood you need, and you tell him. I, I told him, I said, I think I need about six. He said, Well, I think I can handle that. And then he asked me if I was going to tire the old floor out, and I said, No, I'll probably just put it on top. And he said, Well, I'll come help you if you want to take it all out before it'll be even when you get down there. You can't. I mean, that was God right there. <laughs> Had to be. Because the day and age we live in, people just don't offer to help. So it had to be God talking to him. Yeah, most people come to church. Sit there and listen to the preacher, and then you can tell them about five teeth when everybody start doing this number. Lord, I wish he'd hush. I, I need to get home and get something in my belly. I don't think nobody hears like that, because our belly is probably still full. I know mine is. <laughs> <laughs> but really, we need to take time and not just be a hearer. But when we hear God's word and we know it's God's word and we know where it's coming from, we need to be doers. That's right. I thank God for this little church. I thank God that He led me here. And I, I hope and pray that each of us is 
far as I know, everybody's like this. But I hope and pray that God will just keep placing us closer and closer and closer together. And I hope if Satan tries to walk in here that God just bounces him out with the right hook. Because <laughs> anytime you find a church that's in peace and in harmony, Satan's right outside the door there just waiting for somebody to leave that door open just wide enough for him to slip through. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I've seen a lot of churches busted by Satan having his way. And that's why I say we needed to be grounded in God's truth, in God's word. And instead of being hearers, we need to be doers. It's our job as Christians to keep Satan out and grow and grow and grow. God's word. Grow stronger together. And like I said this morning, it thrills me to see these kids in church. There's nothing more precious than a child standing in the choir singing God. It gets me right there. You know, all of us are sitting in here. I'm not going to say we're old. We're like them trees out there. You know, the wind blows and fall comes and leaves start falling off. That's, that's kind of like us older ones. It, it's like our bodies. We don't have strength, muscles like we used to have. Daniel works in wood every day. But I guarantee you, he can't do what he did 50 years ago. Phillips always worked in construction. I reckon that's yep. about all he's ever done. That's all he's ever known. What he could do 50 years ago would probably break his back if he tried to do it today. Just right here. This is the backbone of the church. When we're all gone, these two little girls are going to be adults if time tarries that long. And they're going to get married probably and start raising their own family. And these two girls right here and their families is probably the future of this church. That means this church will still be going if God tarries his coming. Just thrills my heart to see him. And me and Tammy just talked all week about how well behaved these two girls are. You never know they're around unless you look at them. I've never seen two more, more well behaved girls in church. 
I won't call no names, but we had some kids here one Sunday. I thought they were going to tire the floor down. <laughs> Before service was over. The parents needs to be commended on their well done job of raising these girls. And I'm sure Papa will have a lot to do with it too. They are well behaved. Well, this is what God to give me this morning. I hope I didn't drag nobody now to stand up here crying like a baby. But I just hope and pray that each one of us can apply the good things that God's given us our hearts that when we're out on the street or buying groceries or out doing whatever that God that the world can see that God lives within us.